Hello summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Crumbs and I'm here with our 12.12 .12 low elo tier list. Our regular tier list, which we post with the patch rundown and mid patch updates is aimed at around the high gold to platinum skill level. This one covers everything below that. Obviously, any tier list is a bit nuanced, but in general, this is a great way to know what champions to pick and which to avoid to instantly give you a better shot at winning your solo queue games. Mordekaiser moves up to the OP tier, with one of his hardest skill matchups, Fiora, being hit with a decent nerf this patch and Tanks, who he naturally counters becoming more popular, it makes sense that he's back to being one of the very best picks. The only strong meta pick that he really, really struggles to deal with is Lilia. It's pretty much unwinnable at all stages, since she just kites you to death, even within your death realm. So, if you're gonna be picking Mord, I strongly advise you to ban her out. Dr. Mundo also gets moved up to the OP tier. We severely underestimated how OP he was gonna be last patch and only had him in the S tier. I know he's being nerfed this time around, but he's so insanely over the top right now, we think he'll still be worthy of a spot in the highest tier in low elo. Sion is being moved down to the S tier. Remember, Sion's placement on this tier list is assuming you're playing and building him the right way. No more complete suicide Sion, since that's been hard nerfed. And definitely no lethality Sion, it's awful and massively tanks his win rate. When you actually just build Tank Scion with either Sunfire or Frostfire, he's strong in both 1v1s and teamfights and can actually be a useful teammate. Who would have guessed? Not being an endless fountain of gold and magi stacks is actually better for winning games. Tom Kench moves up to the S tier. Like Mundo, he's a stat check tank, meaning that small adjustments to items like we saw in the last patch can go a long way in helping him out. His 1v1 ability is pretty ridiculous for a tank. It's not like he does ridiculous amounts of damage, it's more so that he just does a good amount of it consistently, while also healing and shielding himself. Early on, this gives him solid laning, but as you pick up items like Bami Cinder and Bramble Vest, it can become downright oppressive. Ilawi moves up to the S tier. Like Mord, she's really benefiting from a lot of other meta shifts. She does incredibly well into tanks and other juggernauts, and her traditional counters have all been falling out of favor. She could very easily push the boundaries of being an OP tick, but she has a much, much higher skill cap than Mordekaiser, so for the low elo list, we have to knock a point off. Kale moves down to the A tier. She's still got that late game scaling going for her, but she just doesn't scale so hard that you can auto win the game post 25 minutes, even when down 3000 gold like before. This means her weak early game is a lot more punishable, especially in the longer top lane. She can still work here, but if you're dead set on playing Kale, you may as well just take her mid, where you can scale much more consistently. Olaf is getting bumped down to the A tier. He's generally above average all around and has some good specific counter matchups, but he's just nowhere near as OP as he was a couple of patches ago. Set gets demoted to the A tier. As the meta is shifting, there are just less and less matchups where he's a strong pick. He can still have some impact in games, but he doesn't have the reliable carrying power you want from someone in the S or OP tiers. Meanwhile, Trundle is finally added to the top laner tier list as well, something that probably should have been done a long time ago. For now, we'll put him in the A tier, but it is worth noting that as a counter to some matchups, he's an absolute monster and would be considered OP tier against those picks. Now for the jungle, here's our list. In this role, Trundle moves up to the OP tier. He's just a ridiculously strong pick into every other meta champ, with the ability to hard stomp them in duels at every stage of the game. And it's not just his 1v1 potential against them, he's also really good at shutting them down in teamfights. His pillar can stop or at least slow down the engagement of your opponent, while his ult lets your teammate shred the foe before they can even have an impact in the fight. Ramus moves up to the OP tier. Ramus is pretty much never just an okay pick in solo queue. He usually sits around a 52-ish percent win rate, which means he's a pretty reliable champion. But last patch pushed him up to about 54%. 
making him someone we'd really consider strong, especially with how easy he is to use. You don't need any mechanics at all, just roll into people, taunt them, and collect your LP. Mordekaiser also joins the OP tier. Just like with Toppling, this is just a case of him ebbing and flowing with the rest of the meta. As tanky champs become more and more popular, so does he. Every other pick in the OP tier is hard countered by him aside from Trundle. You beat the rest of them in 1v1s, and in teamfights, you ult them away from your backline when they try to go in, making them useless. However, there is one really, really bad matchup for Mord, Belveth. She absolutely destroys any champ in a 1v1, so when you take her to the death realm, it's pretty much impossible for you to be the one winning the duel. And on that note, we'll be placing Belveth in the S tier. This one is tentative, she's so insanely strong that even the nerfs on this patch may not be enough to knock her out of the OP tier. As an update, we've added Tarek to our regular list, so we're putting him on this one too as an S tier pick. He's got a bit of a learning curve, but once you get good at him, he's an incredibly strong champion that provides a lot of tankiness and utility to fights, while also dishing out some pretty good damage. Vi drops down to the A tier. She still got the consistency of her ult going for her, but the durability patch made it a lot harder for her to just fly around 100 to zeroing people every time it's off cooldown. You'll have to make more plays with your teammates rather than just being able to solo carry. The last set of nerfs for Yi hit him hard, so we're moving him down to the B tier. He's just all around a pretty mad dude right now. You can say a full build Yi still has pretty high DPS, but the risk versus reward of even making it to that point isn't all that worth it. Other hyperscaling junglers can do so much more consistently while also providing some presence early on. Nocturne is being demoted to the B tier. His farm till 6 playstyle just isn't all that rewarding right now. Like other assassins, he's having a much harder time securing a big enough lead to start snowballing early, and even when he does, it often doesn't amount to much as the game goes on. Champions that have either AoE CC and engage, or have good, consistent DPS in fights, are just much more useful than single target burst assassins right now. And for a very similar reason, Echo also moves down to the B tier. Traditionally, Echo hasn't really been an assassin that needed to snowball as badly as other champions in the class. It certainly helped, but you could just safely scale up to two items, at which point your burst damage got super high. But post durability patch, it just doesn't happen that way. You do need to snowball with him to get to the point that you can one-shot people, but with his weak early game in the jungle, that just doesn't happen very reliably. Olaf moves down to the C tier. The nerfs he got on 12.11 were due to how OP he was as a top laner. In the jungle, he was pretty middle of the pack. Since he's very much a stat check champion, those nerfs hit pretty hard and now there's not really a reason to pick him here. Graves gets pushed down to the C tier. Right up there with Lee Sin, Graves is what I call a big ego pick. People pick him and go into the game with a I have to 1v9 this attitude right from the start. They power farm, tax lanes, and in the end, they just end up doing nothing anyways. The 12.11 buffs Gragas got helped him quite a bit, but as a jungler in low elo, he's still pretty bad, so he's only moving up to the C tier. There are way better options for AP carries and tanks. Now here's our mid lane tier list. Once again, Mordekaiser gets promoted to the OP tier. I guess he's just a superstar across the board. It is obvious that Mord would destroy other melee mid laners, but you may think he'd be vulnerable to ranged champions, but that's just not the case. Between Second Wind, Doran's shield, and his W, you can easily outsustain their poke. Nico gets promoted to the S tier. She has strong laning, good wave clear, and is really strong in early skirmishes, so you can provide a lot more presence than most other mages have early on. And that's all backed up by super strong scaling, with her E ult combo easily setting up allies to wipe teamfights. Zareth also gets bumped up to the S tier. As assassins have largely fallen out of favor, poke champions have naturally risen up. You have a much better chance of leaving lane phase without being 0-5, and can actually be an impactful champ for sieging and playing around objectives later, rather than just playing green screen simulator. 
Garen is moving down to the A tier. He's like a budget Mordekaiser. He destroys melee champions and can survive ranged champions, but he doesn't have nearly as much carrying power as the Kaiser right now. Pantheon gets dropped to the A tier as well. He's still the same lane bully he's always been, but with snowballing being much less extreme post their ability changes, you aren't able to just take a game and run with it quite as much as before. You can still get wins with him, but you'll have to work so much harder and need to cooperate with your team to do so. Yasuo also gets demoted to the A tier. This one is tricky. I know it's a bit subjective to say this, but I'm confident in saying that Yasuo's stats are pretty heavily skewed by the player base of the champion being pretty emotional gamers. They tilt and int way more than most other champions. So while his overall win rate says B tier, I think the champ is worthy of A tier when actually played well. Now let's move things down to the bottom lane. Seraphine moves up to the OP tier. In yet another attempt to buff her as a support, Riot is just making her even stronger as a bot lane carry. They really just need to give up on this one. She's way, way too good and is by far the best scaling pick for the role. Ash is moving up to the S tier. We thought she would be really OP after the durability patch hit since we thought utility picks in general would be OP, but hyper carries were just way too dominant. Now that they have mostly been reeled in, she can finally shine. Yasuo moves down to the B tier. He's situationally okay with certain supports or in certain matchups, but you don't want to blind him. You'll also need to definitely work on your mechanics with him, since he's much harder to play than traditional AD carries are. Zeri is being placed in the B tier. At upper ranks, she's honestly still pretty good, even after all the nerfs, but her super high skill cap leaves her in a pretty average place in low elo. And to finish things off, we have our supports. Tarek gets brought all the way up to the OP tier. We thought he'd be broken post their ability changes, and now that people have gotten past his learning curve, the stats are showing it. Janna nerfs on this patch may be enough to bring her down to the S tier, so that's where we're placing her for now. But this could very easily be reversed. Her win rate is obscenely high, so it could take several rounds of nerfs to actually beat her down. I don't know why Riot is overlooking her. She's been so good for so long. I'd rather they over nerf her than go back and do small buffs to bring her up rather than tiptoeing around her. Senna gets bumped up to the A tier. She definitely does better in higher elo than down here, but she also deserves to be better than the average picks in the B tier. While a lot of people pick Yumi to turn off their brains, when you actually make an effort to impact the lane and team fights, she can actually be a pretty strong pick. And now that other enchanters have been cut down just a bit, we think she's a reliable A tier pick. She's close to being S tier, but basically guaranteeing a lost laning phase makes her a bit too weak for that. On top of relying on your AD carry to carry in a low elo game is not the most reliable game plan. And that about wraps things up for our 12.12 .12 low elo tier list. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Since making this list involved going over all the champions in all the roles, I'm sure we overlooked a pick here or there. So feel free to let us know if you think we missed something down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until then, good luck on the rift and may the LP God smile down upon you.